Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back, everybody. So, you want to know how to play Pokemon? You want to know how to play with your friends, do you? At home? With family? Well, stay tuned, and Team Sagar will take you on a ride of a lifetime. All right, here we go, guys. All right, so, what we're going to do here, we got... The first step, we, we made little bullet points so we can go step by step by step by step. Right, Miss Sager? Absolutely. Absolutely. We want you guys to have fun like we do here at home. And learning is fun as long as it's done in a fun way. It sure is. Now, most of these are actually the trading card game online rules and, and, and professional rules. Um, but so, some things, some like certain cards that we technically would use in our game, like in our games and play here at home, don't follow the rules as far as what traditional like league play allows. So all the backs have to be the same. Some of the cards we have, we only have like special edition versions, so the backs don't necessarily look the same. We don't always add them in if we've got an extra, but sometimes it happens here at home. Some of these cards, for example, the little uh, here's army. One here. Yep. So. Ones like these, You're they're not, not allowed in traditional, like an actual um, tournament play and, and league play and stuff, because they're visible. You can tell what they are if you really know your deck. And some of the cards are actually banned from tournament play for just being overpowered yeah. or, or uh, other things. Just different reasons. So other than that, all these rules can be used for playing the actual game. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to start with part one, which is building your deck. Now... We will clip that in here so you can actually take a peek, see, and, uh, you know, see how to actually build a deck or, or just kind of a rough go through of how to build a deck. Yep. Um, then we will come back and uh, we'll get into how you use your deck. Exactly. All right. See you in a second. All right. So, for this part of the how to play Pokemon at home, with your friends, family, and, well, whoever else you want to play with, we have the deck part. So, mine is called Rock Solid, because, bam, we solid. Uh, the missus is going to do hers here after this, and uh, you get to see that too, because it's pretty cool. We're going to make them pretty quick, though, because, you know, if you want to learn more about the actual decks we're using, you can uh, check out the deck builds that will probably be coming after this at some point in time. So... The main thing with the deck is you want 60 cards. Well, you don't want. You have to have 60 cards. I want more than that, but I can't have more than that. Um, so 60 cards. You can have that however you'd like. You can have mostly Pokemon, Energy, Trainers, whatever you really want. It's up to you. I like to go with a good variation of 20 Trainers, 20 Pokemon, and 20 Energy. Now that is variable depending on the decks I'm building. But for this one here, I wanted a pretty simple one because it's easier to explain. So, 20 of each, 20 trainers, 20 Pokemon, 20 energies. That's 60. We just did math. Yay! Yay us! Okay. Now, let's uh, throw these together quickly. And, whoop, literally throw them. We'll give them a quick little shuffle. Alright, now, you want to make sure they're shuffled up nice and good, this is just not a, this is just a, to explain and, and show, so this is a, just a rough shuffle, but anyways, get them all shuffled up nice, and uh, once you got them all shuffled, you're on to moving out the hair, because you, you don't want a hair in there, um, you're on to the next step, which we will be to after Miss Sager's video here in a moment, alright, see you in a second. All right, so now that we're done building a deck, or four, um, which one should we just use for an example here? We'll just use this one. Okay, so we're just gonna move these out of the way. Uh, we built a couple of example decks. I'll keep one and she'll keep one, and uh, we'll let her do the next step here. So, once you have your deck built, um, you wanna make sure that you give it a good shuffle. What we like to do is after you've shuffled it a few times, uh, we'll just do a quick little shuffle so you can see. What'll happen is because you just built it, we'll take out a few cards here just to look at. For a instance. Um, so 
that's actually not too bad. So, you want it to be a good mix, or, or at least shuffled up. You don't want to get a whole handful of energies. Uh, and but you, you want to make sure you definitely have at least a couple of basic Pokemon. One. That, you have to have at least one. Yeah, at least one. One is good. Two is better, depending on the strength. If they're really, really low energy and really, you know. Yeah, you're not allowed to reshuffle um, if, you, have if any. you already have one basic. Yeah. So if you have any basic, you have to take what's there. Uh, but if you have no basic or a handful of energies, handful of trainers, you definitely want to reshuffle that. Um, make sure you show your... Opponent, opponent before, before shuffling, shuffling. Um, and we will move on to step two. So what is step two? Hold on before we continue to step two. Oh, okay. Yep. Mr. Forgot a step. Oh, yeah, I so, forgot. It was on the side. Yep. So I'll, well, I'll no, finish. You, you revealed yep, that Yeah, I'll finish part. that because that's part um, of mine. So, so you show your hand to your opponent um, before, like when you reshuffle, uh, you have to show your opponent what you had first so that they know why you're reshuffling and not just to get a better hand. And then your opponent gets an extra card yeah, when you reshuffle. Like for every time, so for example, the first time it happens, not a big deal. Second time it has to happen again, they get an extra card. Third time, so on, so on. On the off chance that your deck's really just being unfair, it gives them a bit of an advantage, so to speak. So now that we got that shuffled out, what is the next step? All right, you want to use so, mine since it's already really shuffled? Or? Sure. Okay. So slide that one over there. So the next step is you want to take your seven cards, four, five, six, seven, that is going to be your hand, and then you take your six for your prize cards. So, now you don't look at your prize cards, they go aside for prizes. And they always stay face down. They always stay face down unless, for example, you have something like a town map trainer uh, supporter card that allows you to flip all of them over, or certain abilities or attacks that allow you to flip a particular card once, you know, certain times like that. So there are special conditions in which you will get to see your prize cards, but it's not very likely. And so, you always want to have seven in your hand to start. So this is not a terrible hand, nope. but there is no trainers, so that can be bad. But for your first turn, this is actually a really good lineup. So hold it up a bit higher. So. We have one basic that we can use, so that would become our active Pokemon. Okay, now show them how that works. So, what do you mean how that works? Well, you, you don't put it face up. Right? Yeah, so to start off, you'd start with it face down. You would flip a coin to determine who goes first. Or roll a dice. Or roll a dice. Like but we like to do, because my coin flipping is not good. Yeah, he doesn't always have the best luck with coin flipping, <laughs> so he prefers not to. Um, here, I'm going to pass you, just give me one second. Um, I'm gonna give you one more basic here. Take that one as, right. a, as a for instance for your bench, right? Yeah, so if for example you're given these two You would probably want to choose this one hoping mostly because you've got just one basic energy attack It's such a simple one exactly now on the chance that you don't have the energy that corresponds You would choose this one because then energy that you any energy that you might have can apply and he can use his attack Yeah, so what does this mean? So this particular means no energy color is like any particular color is required. So whenever you see the symbol for the energy, you absolutely have to use that one or a special energy that's like a rainbow energy or whatever. This means any energy can be used. So even though it's a fighting energy down below, you could use an electric, a water, so on and so forth. Yeah, but this one here means you have to use at least yeah. the one so This fighting. one is all blocked behind having mm. fighting energy for him. If he doesn't have fighting energy, he cannot attack. But this one has at least one that can. Exactly, so. So in this particular instance, I would definitely put this one out on my bench, and I would put this one out as my active Pokemon. Now, how many can you have on your bench? You can have up to five on your bench. Now, what we always try to do is not fill the bench completely <coughs> unless all of a sudden, you know, if I get a bunch of GXs and, and big stomp cards, they're going to fill my bench because Mr. likes to use attacks that hit, that like to hit the bench. So higher energy or uh, health points definitely translates to more protected bench because if you have no benched Pokemon, that's one way it's a guaranteed loss. If your active Pokemon goes down and there's nothing on the bench, you lose, even if it's just your first turn. So... That would be that, okay, and then so you would continue until the actual turn starts. So when your turn starts... So the opponent would do the same thing now. So Yeah, so imagine we had a bunch well, of regular... You know, imagine these were all basics. We could put two or yep. three down on our bench. Up to five. Up to five. So we'll, we'll just pretend all five of these are your basics here. Yep. I guess there's more, but... We'll pretend all five of those are your basics. Now, is that even on... Okay, that's just barely on the screen. I mean, we'll so. do one that way. We can show that we can actually lay a there basic. Okay, so there... 
There's your basics, okay? You got your active Pokemon. Now we're just gonna pretend that the opponent is doing the same thing over here. They're picking their their active whatever they have. They're, for, they're your mirror. They do the exact same yeah, as you. Whatever are. they have for benched Pokemon, they got them over here. Um, so that's how you start off. You don't put any energy trainers, nothing down right now. Um, so now, can you grab us a coin? Uh, ah, never mind. They're right here. Okay. So now. We're gonna pretend the Mr. Or, or the Mrs. and I are uh, about to get started. So, what, heads. what we would do is, yep, someone would pick heads or tails, and uh, we flip the coin. So, it heads. That would mean the Mrs. goes first. All right. So now, what we're gonna do is it switches to her turn. So, she would flip over her basic and her bench. Yep, yeah, and your bench. And now we would start with our turn here. So, to start off your turn, you always start by drawing one card. Okay, it's good. We got a trainer card. So, we can actually show a little on, bit of everything. Yep. On uh, each turn, you can place any basic Pokemon that you have in your hand up to five. You can't have more than five. So, if we had a basic, just imagine, you know, put one down. Exactly. We'll just pretend Gollum here is a basic. Boom, we put him down. That's our turn there. Okay, we can attach one energy card per turn. So, we have two energy here, so we're going to choose to energize our, our uh, ba um, active Pokemon because we want him to be able to attack. Now, I'm going to jump in for, with yep. one of the extras. Um, you can retreat once per your turn, so imagine he had one energy or you had a trainer card like the switch card oh, hold here. Hold on, I was going to get to that in a sec. Yep, the, the, for that example. You can switch him out if you had one with a cheaper cost or this wasn't a fighting energy, so this one would be technically useless. You can switch it out for a dis different Pokemon that can use the energy that you have available. So not always attaching your energies to just your active Pokemon, prepping your bench a little bit with those one energy exactly. can sometimes be very, very handy. And you can switch beforehand to make it a little bit more useful if you've just energized a Pokemon you didn't want from the bench. Exactly. Okay, so now we, you're allowed your one energy per turn. You're allowed to use one supporter card per turn, which I'm just gonna uh, pretend that we had one in our hand here. So just give me a second here. Okay, there's one there. Perfect. So we're gonna pretend that we had a supporter card in our hand. So our, per, our supporter card here, you're allowed one of them per turn. Most of them tell you at the bottom or somewhere on the card how many you're allowed to use. Um, so we're gonna play our supporter card, which lets us draw two cards. During this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So now this goes into our discard pile, which is always beside your bet your deck. So now we get to draw two cards because of that, which is good. We pulled some more energy. We can't put any more down though because it's the first turn. So now we're allowed to use um, how many items or tool cards, Miss Sager? We are allowed to put down as many item and tool cards as we want to use in a turn because most of the time you don't really have that many to be able to use exactly. at a time anyways. Um, only one tool card per Pokemon though, unless it tells you otherwise on the card. Some Pokemon have exceptions, will let you, yep. but it's very, very rare. Um, but with supporters and stadium cards, they're the only two that you're only allowed to place one down per turn. Yep. Items and tools, as many as you want. Okay, so now we're gonna jump to the trainer, we don't need to use it, but we're, I'm just going to explain and we're, we want to show you everything. So, we're, you're allowed one item, or, or not one, one item, you're allowed multiple items, but we only have one. So we're going to use our switch card. So now, we're going to switch our buzz wall. Do you have any other energies that isn't fighting in here? Uh, don't worry about what all is in that deck. Well, no, I'm just looking for different energies. Oh, for, no, for there's, there's not. Okay. Okay, so, we're going <laughs> to... Looking through my deck, I'm trying to stop. Well, you no, that I'm not deck. actually looking I'll at. I'll stop it. you with that later. Um, so we're gonna switch to Silicobra. We didn't well, have to do that, but we're just gonna pretend. It, we'll pretend he's already energized too, just for just for an instance. Okay. So now that we've used our item, we've used our supporter. We we've got all that stuff out of the way. We've we uh we we've done basically everything but attack now. So now you want to make sure you're always checking for any abilities. So now we have a Flygon here that has an ability. So his ability 
As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, all of your Pokemon take 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks. So, he's not our active Pokemon, so his ability won't take effect right now. But, you always want to be checking that because some of them will actually work from your bench. Some of them will work only when they're placed from your hand, and some will only work when they're you're active. So always be watching and checking your abilities. And then some of them I've noticed will also at the end, like will at will have this weird little statement that says, <laughs> "You're basically you're allowed to use your all of your abilities you want to or can do before your attack turn, like and you can still attack." But some of them have that after you've used this ability, your turn ends, and then. Everything after this would be, <laughs> and I try to always use those ones a little bit more strategically if it's like, well, either way I wasn't able to technically go, so I'm going to use my ability that's technically going to end my turn and make sure everything else is done before that ability because it instantly ends your turn and, and I've caught myself in a trap a couple of times yeah, using you it. always want to be reading. Yeah, always okay. be reading them. So now we're almost <laughs> done. Now before you attack, you are allowed to re retreat once before attack. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do that for an example too. So to retreat our Silicobra here, it is one retreat cost. It'll tell you down here in the bottom right corner. Um, I'll bring it up closer so you can see. And give them a reason as to why they might want to retreat that. Maybe yeah. it's because so of his, uh, his let, let's, let's just Yeah, let's just say that uh, we're fighting a grass Pokemon. Like something like a Scyther. Yeah, this guy is weak against grass. We're like, oh no. We're gonna die. We gonna die. Yeah, Get out. His attack does more so, than, our, than our health can handle, so we would be dead in one hit. Yeah. And we don't wanna lose so him. So we're like, you know what? We don't wanna lose this guy, so we have to pay one energy cost. Because it's colorless, it can be any energy you wanna discard. So we're gonna discard our one energy and retreat this guy so he don't die. Um, and now, we're gonna bring out our Flygon so we can put this ability. Unless, it, it's okay. Yeah, the weakness isn't a big deal right now. We're bringing him out now and his ability. So now that he's our active Pokemon, his ability takes effect. So now, all of our Pokemon take 30 less damage from our opponent's attacks. Just by having him as our active Pokemon, now all of our bench Pokemon take 30 less damage too if she has something that wants to hurt our bench. So now that we've finished all of that, now we can attack. It's the last thing before you end your turn. Um, so we're just going to pretend we're doing our attack. And we're going to use our Desert Hurricane, which does 120 damage. Just pretend we're all energized for it so that it's yeah. appropriate. We'll, we'll just pretend we're energized for it. And we're going to do Desert Hurricane, does 120 damage. Always read your attacks. Some will say discard energy. Some will say move energy. Move energy. Some will say they do damage to you or to benched Pokemon as well. Yours or theirs. Yeah, always pay attention to that. Um, Imagine we wanted to use our GX attack. Yep. Um, first, what you want to do is always check the opponent's card now. So let's do it for instance here with our Buzzwald. So our Buzzwald is weak against Psychic by two. It's a shiny card, it's a bad example I guess, but there we go. So, we're not psychic, but if we were psychic, we would do double damage with our attacks. Um, now, resistance, same thing. Uh, let's see if we can find one with resistance here. Nobody's resistance, nothing. Uh, just give me one second. Somebody's gotta be. There's gotta be a resistance dude in here somewhere. Somebody's gotta have resistance, mm -hmm. I mean. Seriously, where's what the? They resist uh, nothing. Okay, so uh, this is a bad deck for resisting. Um, oh, hold on, right here in front of me. Okay. So, Ghastly here. Here we go. Perfect example, actually. So, Ghastly is resistance to minus twenty. That means it takes twenty damage off of our attacks before weakness and resistance. So, for example, the 120 before it does any any of the extras, it would take off the 20 and bring it down to 100. Exactly. So it would be 100 flat, and then, for example, if it was weak against it, that would bring it from a 120 to a 240 before even doing any of these extra things. Okay, so now we would do our damage. Boom. Ghastly would be dead. Well beyond well, dead. Knocked out because they don't die. No. Um, because whatever damage you do. You take off their health points. Now, Ghastly only has 50 health points. So even being resistant, it's not helping him any. Yeah, he, he got Um, We're going to keep him there again because he's our example Pokemon. So now, we're going to move on to... Do -do -do -do. Okay, so now, that's all of that. We've, done, we've talked about weakness, resistance, retreat. So now, let's, let's move on to Ghastly. 
So, would you like to take over Ghastly here? As we need to explain. Oh, Ghastly doesn't do. Hold on. Uh, we need someone that does some poisoning. Okay. You you talk about the poison stuff while I find somebody. Okay. I might have to just switch decks. So well, honestly, we could probably just even just for an example on him because it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. We'll just pretend. Okay. So pass me the other tin because I need the other counters. Okay. So first thing we're, we'll talk about is what happens if your opponent does any of these following conditions, what they can what they consider these special conditions. Yeah, your special conditions. So, with those include things like you're burned, you're poisoned, you're paralyzed, you're asleep, you're confusion, all of those things. Confusion pretty much sticks on you until you've gone to the bench. Benching removes almost every single one except for um, the damage counters. All the damage counters stick to your Pokemon wherever and, they go. And paralyze. Um, because you're paralyzed you... in your sleep. You cannot retreat. Yep. And you cannot bring them back or anything like that. So they're stuck. Unless they're... you have something like a switch card. A special, yeah, a special card or something so that allows. Um, so confusion gets removed. Your burn uh, heals. Poison goes away. All that if you go to the bench. All right. So now we'll talk about what actually happens for poison. You yep. get this little marker here. You throw it down. And it lets everybody know that you've been poisoned, and then you take the appropriate amount of damage. So basically, it's supposed to be one damage counter in between turns. Unless you have a specialized card. Unless you turn. have a specialized card that that states, okay, your opponent's going to take four damage counters in between turns from poison, and, and so on and so forth. So every single time a turn would go back and forth. And that's both would, turns too. Yeah. So I, I thought it was one at first, and then we had to actually look it up, and it turns out, nope, it's in between every turn. mine and hers, and then in between hers and mine. So that, that's... It stacks up pretty quick, especially on quick, some weaker yes. Pokemon. And then with the burn, it takes two in between. So same thing, but we like to use this marker here. To kind of give a heads up. So... And then, so it takes two, and then the opponent would have to flip in order to see if it gets removed or if they stay burned for the following yeah, turn. Yeah, so in between turns, it would do 20 damage, then you flip. Because it's tails, I'm still burned, so now in between the next turn, we would take another 20 damage. So it would go up to four. And I'd have to flip again, and as you see... He I, would stay burned. I, I hate flipping, so there's two turns, we'll flip again. So there's three turns. I mean, I'm just continuously burning because I can't get heads. Yeah. So that's how burn works. 20 in between, but you do have the chance of flipping a coin to remove it. Paralysis uh, is sort of similar. It doesn't do any damage. It just stops you from taking your entire turn. Yeah, so you just basically so, lose your turn. You yeah. don't flip a coin. You don't nothing. You just you lose your turn. You can lay your trainer cards, and you can energize, and so on and so forth, but you actually physically cannot attack or retreat your card or your Pokemon unless you have something like a switch card a switch, that allows you to get out of it. That will save you, but otherwise you are stuck. Or, a or one that allows, uh, removes special conditions yep. and such. Um, asleep is the same way. You flip in between turns to see if you can get heads. If you get heads, you wake up. If you're if it's tails, you stay asleep. There is no damage though, so that one is a good one. Uh, and confusion is the only one that is in, in in between turns. It's a as you go to do your attack turn. Yep, you. Uh, every time you go to do an attack, like you me flip for a instance coin. here, we'll, we'll pretend we're gonna try to use Desert Hurricane. And heads, so your attack hits. Yep, which is 120 damage. Tails, or it does 30 damage to himself. See, tails again. As you, even in the how-to video, I can't <laughs> get heads. So even if he w had no damage counters on him before, every single time he tries to attack, he's confused unless he uses a card that heals the special condition. Yep, or move it to the bench. Or move it to the bench. He stays confused and will continue to do 30 damage to himself every single time There's another. he attempts to attack. Okay, I quit. I quit. I'm going home. I'm done. She can finish. And so, as you see, <laughs> flipping the coin can really, really help and hinder and the ones that have to happen in between turns are the poison the burn the paralysis and the asleep the par the paralyzed is basically sticks in between turns all right so now the how to win i'm moving on to the last bit of of our segment here and hopefully we didn't miss anything if there is something else that you are still unsure about let us know in the comments down below and we will definitely clarify it for you guys um, and if there's something that you guys know that we might not have, have gotten to or known, let us know. Absolutely. Um, so, 
Now, how to win. How to win. So what you need to do is, I will go through the first step, Miss Sagra for the next, and so on and so forth, because we are Team Sagra! Whoop, whoop. And the best part about it is there are three different types of ways that you can achieve winning the game of Pokemon. So, the first way, if an opponent has no more benched Pokemon in play. Um, so, let's say, for instance, we didn't have any benched Pokemon down here, um, and we're still confused. Okay, and we, we're not going to put a bunch of markers on because it's going to take forever. Uh, and we're still confused. So let's say we only have 20, 10, health. 10, 20 health left. Um, and we get attacked here. Boom. Well, now we gone. So even though she might have more prize cards left, so she's still got six prize cards here. She beat our Flygon. So she's going to take her, her prize cards, which is fine. But... That's we, game over. We we lost because now that this guy is gone, there's no active Pokemon. We have nobody to bring out. So now, no matter how many prize cards she has left, we are over. It's done. We lose. So now, the second way to win is basically gonna go to this one here. So the next one is if your draw card pile is completely gone. So you go to start your next turn and you cannot draw a card. Yep. Your turn ends, and you basically forfeit it to your opponent. So no, that no draw, no cards yep. to draw means no next turn, which means you cannot go. So if you have, for instance, too many cards that are discarding cards, or you're continuously lost zone cards. Yeah, you're continuously discarding your cards. Uh, let's say, for instance, this is here. Well. All right, so this is our turn. We're, we're finishing up. We just used a supporter that says, hey, draw two cards. Okay, cool. Well, we take our two cards. Well, guess what? We just killed ourselves, basically, because now it doesn't even matter how this turn goes. We're, we lost. Yeah. We just lost by picking up those two cards. So even if we had a whole bench full of Pokemon, we had everybody energized, we could have stomped all the way through the game. We don't have a, a draw pile left. Therefore, forfeit, the other person automatically wins. So always make sure to be keeping an eye on your draw pile and try to keep some cards in your disc, like in your hand or in your deck. Yep, and if it's allow good. you to put things from your discard pile back. Exactly. That way you can always be recycling and replenishing that draw pile at least a couple times. So now the last way to win, and, and the best way, easiest way that most people do win, is by collecting your prize cards. So every time you knock out a regular Pokemon, like just a ride on, he's not an EX, a GX, a tag team, nothing like that. You collect one prize card. So once you collect your one prize card, you put it in your hand and carry on with your turn. So now, if you take out a GX or an EX, V, all, all those other kind of cards, I think um, count as well. you get a uh, you get two prize cards instead of one. So now we would take two. Uh, there's no tag teams in there. No, I'm, I'm um, my So now let's say, oh hey, here's one right here. Yeah, I was just gonna grab them. So let's say. We pull a tag team. Boom. We're doing good. All of a sudden, oh no. They took us down. 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 They get three well, prize cards. Well, they get three prize cards for taking out a tag team. So, even though it might be a big, huge card and you might get a little scared, it, when it goes down, you get three prize cards. It's like taking down three Pokemon. So, two, you take out two tag teams and you've taken all your prize cards, and that's an easy yeah, win. You have taken like, out the game. It's not very easy to take them down, but it can be an easy win. Make sure I put these back in the right deck. And then there are some trainer cards, stadium cards, and Pokemon with special abilities that can alter the amount of cards that you can collect on not when Pokemon are knocked out. Sometimes the ability will be, hey, if your Pokemon, if your opponent was using a GX attack you can take one extra prize card. So it'll all of a sudden take it from being two prize cards to three prize cards. And that can be pretty handy. Or it can be something like a stadium card that tells you that everybody takes one less prize card when they knock something out. So all of a sudden, simply knocking out a Ghastly, which would have given you a prize card, all of a sudden means you don't get a prize card at all. And you really just gotta work harder for those, those tag teams and those GX. Which makes it even harder. Makes it even harder, so it can really 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 help and hinder everybody a little bit but they can be fun they really can yeah we have a blast we really do hopefully this uh video explained everything to you guys hopefully you guys can have fun playing at home with your friends and family um and if we happen to forget anything definitely let us know if there's something you're still unclear about definitely let us know 
And if you need any help with the little deck build, there's plenty of different ones on the channel already, and we're always making new decks with all the new cards we get. All four of these will be up. Yeah. Uh, the Mrs. has three or four that are going to be up, so we have a lot on the way soon. So definitely stay tuned for them. Um, but because we didn't do an intro, I wanted to do a cool little funny awesome one instead. Um, make sure you all are having a fantastic day or night, whatever it is where you guys are in this lovely world. Um, yeah, and uh, make sure you're staying awesome, keeping positive. And always being kind to each other. Always being kind to each other. Alright everyone, love each and every one of you. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we wouldn't be here without each and every one of you. So, we will see each and every one of you in the next video. Alright. Love yous.